Good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Saturday, June 27th, the feast day of St. Cyril of Alexandria, and uh, he is considered to be a, a church doctor and a church father and doctor of the church. Um, he died in 444 AD, uh, and he is the patron saint of Alexandria, which is in Egypt. Today's gospel is from Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 17. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a person subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come here, and he comes, and to my slave, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into the outer darkness where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, You may go, as you have believed. Let, be done for you. Let it be done for you. And at that very hour, his servant was healed. Jesus entered the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, the fever left her, and she rose and waited on him. When it was evening, they brought him many who were possessed by demons, and he drove out the spirits by a word, and cured all the sick, to fulfill what had been said by Isaiah the prophet, he took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Okay, we can, we've got a... It's a little bit longer gospel this morning. Uh, it's uh, a lot of healing is going on. There's three different cases uh, with the centurion or the centurion's servant, uh, Peter's mother-in-law, and then of course the the other healings with uh, cure, uh, driving out demons. Um, so just in case you didn't know, uh, at the the first story, the the healing of a centurion's servant. A centurion was a military officer who was in command of a hundred men. Um, so as we as we look through that story, uh, you can you can see the type of leadership that this military officer has. You know he is in dire. Uh, well, he's he's overly concerned uh, for the care of his his servant um, and the, the soldiers that are subject to him, which I think is something very important to take take note of as far as the type of leaders that Jesus and the church and scripture we need to aspire to be. Um, and then he humbles himself, you know, saying, you know, he, and he understands the power and the, the expectation and the responsibility that comes with leadership. Uh, so that's, uh, I think that's something important to take note of. And that's going to kind of be part of our challenge today before we get done with the diving into scripture a little bit more. Um, but then, of course, uh, so, so Jesus is pleased uh, about how the centurion is handling things and his true concern and faith uh, in, in, in Jesus Christ and his belief uh, that, that Jesus healed his servant on the spot. Uh, and the next healing, uh, the cure of Peter's mother-in-law. I know that that kind of implies that Peter was married, right? But um, So I kind of you had to dive into it a little bit uh, because, you know, Peter, the first pope, of the Catholic Church and, you know, just doing some research and stuff like that. So it's under the impression, now again, we don't know for sure, that's part of the mystery of faith. Um, but nowhere in Scripture is Peter's wife ever mentioned. Uh, but then also the term in Latin and Greek in the translation, wife, for us, means different back then. So it's, or it's not, um, you know, it, there, there's different interpretations of, of different terms. Uh, but either way, uh, nowhere in Scripture is Peter's wife mentioned. Um, so it, it brings us to believe that, that, and even if as the mother-in-law is, is lying in bed with a fever, you know, on her deathbed, you know, 
you one would think, you know, in Matthew's gospel that Matthew would would write that the 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 daughter is there, Peter's wife, if it's her mother, right? But she's not. Uh, so it's it, it brings us to believe logically that Peter's wife, uh, that Peter is you know a widow, like his wife uh, was deceased prior to Jesus calling him into his his role as the disciple. So that's that's that because I know that I question that. I'm like, wait, Peter was married. Um, so yeah, so that was that was that. So then uh, Peter or Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. Um, and then also the other healings and stuff like that where, you know, the infirmities, our sins, um, oftentimes cause physical afflictions due to our human weakness. Um, so that is, uh, yeah, that's the gospel today. Kind of lengthy, I guess, but um, everything that goes with it or the challenge today is to look at, you know, it's, it's dealing with the healing of the centurion's servant. Is that the, the goal is to, you know, we are all called to be leaders, uh, leaders in our families, leaders as in our careers, leaders for the church. We all are called to be leaders in some way, shape, or form. Um, so the question is, how do we lead? Uh, do we lead with, um, you know, to, to lead to serve others or others to serve us? All right, so that's, uh, that's something that we just need to ponder because um, true servant leadership and humble service and leadership is what Jesus wants us to do. And, and, and Jesus did a great job of demonstrating that for us as, a, as our example and our role model. So I know whenever it comes to leadership, I myself included, um, a lot of times I need to you know, let my ego get, you know, be pushed aside and, uh, you know, just learn to get over ourselves sometimes um, still. Uh, but I think that that's, that's just something that we need to be aware of and make sure that we lead with a compassionate heart, with a serving heart, with love and care for whoever it is that we are leading, uh, no matter what it might be in our career, faith, or whatever, our families, um, and just have true true care for those that are quote-unquote under us. Um, and then things will all be taken care of the way that Jesus in, intends them to. So the centurion's servant was healed due to the how the centurion approached leadership. So there we go. Have a great Saturday. God bless. Keep it real. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.